So we go back to Britt Hume, who's standing by uh, for what this means. I was struck watching this race, Britt, uh, by how little of it was about economics. Typically, governor's races have a lot of tax questions, for example. This one, the Northern Campaign, heavily financed by outside spending on guns, on abortion, on immigration, basically on progressive social issues. Is that the template going forward, do you think, for Democrats? Well, bear this in mind, Tucker, that, uh, that Ed Gillespie and, and later on Donald Trump himself tried to make the Virginia economy an issue, but the Virginia economy is pretty good. And, of course, so much of it is dependent on government spending because you've got that whole Hampton Roads area down there, which is military, and then you've got this vast uh, array of uh, suburbs on the Virginia side of Washington, D.C., heavily populated by government workers. The whole Washington, D.C. economy has been largely recession-proof. So the economy was doing pretty well even through the recession, and it has done well since. The, ever end, the never ending growth of government is good for the Washington, D.C. area economy. And as I say, so much of the, of the Virginia vote comes out of those suburbs there. Uh, it's also worth perhaps, uh, Tucker, discussing how we now know or believe we know that, that Northam has won this race. In addition, of course, we have the exit polls, which suggest that the issue profile tended perhaps to favor him. But in addition, there are about, oh, two to three dozen precincts around the, around the state that if you get a handle on how they're going, will tell you how the state is going. And one report I just looked at said that you know, there were about 30 they were looking at and 20 of them had come in and Northam was leading everywhere. And when you see something like that, that's, that's how a decision desk makes, right. a, makes a decision to call a race, which is evidently what we have done here. It looks like, it looks like that the, the, the political gravity, uh, the unpopularity of Donald Trump, uh, and and the you know the the out year the fact that this is an off year election with the first term in office uh, has uh, has has won this race for Ralph Northam. It would have been a shocker if he hadn't won, but it appears now that he has an important win for for Democrats in Virginia. Yeah, I think the majority of DNC employees were working on this race. DNC put in over a million dollars into it and then millions spent uh, by outside groups. I, I just saw so our, our research today showed that Northam won federal employees, as you noted, a huge constituency in Virginia by 17 points. Um, I guess that's probably not too different from the presidential uh, results. But it seemed like turnout, and we'll, we'll know much more about this tomorrow when the smoke clears, but it seemed like turnout was profound in Democratic districts. What, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, well, I think that's, I think that's in, in considerable measure the Trump factor. Um, you know, t Trump stirs passions, and the people who are for him are passionate, and the people who are against him are passionate. In the state of Virginia, remember, he lost Virginia. It's the only southern state he lost, really. So, right. you know, you think about that. This is not, Virginia really isn't Trump country. And an aroused electorate in Virginia is going to be bad news for a Republican running in the age of Trump. It's hard to see Ed Gillespie as a Trump candidate. I know there are a lot of stories in the last week about how he was running on the Trump template. But I think of Ed Gillespie as, very, I mean, we ran the Republican Party, not a, a party that was pretty hostile to Trump. Going forward, again, the question for the midterms is what lesson do Republicans draw from this? And I, I th it seems like it could go either well, way. If, I th well, maybe, but I mean, if you look up a mainstream Republican in the in the dictionary or the encyclopedia, you might find a picture of Ed Gillespie. Well, exactly. He is, he is very much a yeah. He's very much a creature of the Republican Party and a pretty mainstream guy, which is why I think that you know the the at, some of the things, the criticisms that I've seen from him from some on the left that he's a white supremacist are patently ridiculous. Um, but they, they, you know, those, that, that grew out of the fact that, that he made, you know, Confederate st statues and his desire to preserve them in place and issue and so on. And, and the MS-13 gang, you know, all of that. Um, social issues, perhaps, historical issues, but uh, not the mark of a white supremacist. Um, but I think, you know, when you, when you, when you look at this, uh, this was not a race that, would, that figured very well for the Re Republicans to win. On the other hand, this, if you're Donald Trump and you look at this, you think, well, I suppose some Trump supporters will say he didn't give us the 100 proof full bore uh, Trump agenda or the Trump platform, but he pretty much did on the issues. There was much, much daylight between him and Donald Trump. Um, and he didn't, he didn't personally embrace Trump. But the, the, and, the, and the thing that a lot of people forget here, uh, Tucker, is that when you look at the Republican Party and what it's basically stood for over the last you know, quarter of a century and more, it has been basically the, the agenda that Trump has embraced as president, the legislative agenda, 
the regulatory agenda and 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 the national security agenda. So that's you know that's where all this kind of comes out. There's not that much daylight between the Republican Party and Donald Trump, and the question tonight is whether Trump drags them drags the party down or or, or whether they don't get or whether members of the party don't get close enough to him to to get the updraft. I don't think there's a very good case for an updraft tonight. I'm, I'm just hearing right now the Fox News decision desk is projecting that Democrat Phil Murphy uh, will be the next governor of New Jersey. Britt, not at all a surprise there. Chris Christie, probably the most, certainly among the most unpopular governors in the state, and all of our research today on this, in effect, exit polling that we did, suggested that voters were mad at Chris Christie and that that anger was informing their voting. He's, Chris Christie leaves off as highly unpopular, deeply unpopular. Uh, and, and, and look, let's, let's, let's be clear, New Jersey is a bright blue state. Um, so any Republican running in New Jersey is, is running uphill, and almost any Democrat is running downhill. Downhill wins most of the time. So, I mean, would you look at these two, I think we can probably take New Jersey off the map because it's, as you said, it's a historically Democratic state and it had a historically unpopular governor. But the Virginia contest seemed a more ideological contest. Is that something, looking at it, if you were running the Republican Party, that would make you nervous about the coming midterms? Well, to, to the extent that Donald Trump's unpopularity in Virginia, which was pretty strong, his approval rating was, it's not the worst it is anywhere, but it's, it was, he was way underwater in Virginia, down in the 40s, I guess, and, and of course nationally he's down in the high 30s, according to most of the polls. That's what has to worry you going into next year, is you know, you've got an unpopular president. Unpopular presidents are always a drag on the incumbent party ticket in a midterm election. That is likely to be true next year. Um, people, uh, many people say, you know, in polls, you, know, the, the, you ask these questions about the things he's for, the agenda he's for. The agenda items do better than he does. So you look into the next year and you hope, for example, that they can get a tax reform and tax cut passed. Um, you hope they may be able to recover in some measure on Obamacare if you're a Republican. But you worry about the fact that you, you know, legislatively there's not been a lot of big, big achievements. Uh, there have been a lot of little ones on regulations, which are not right. inconsequential, but they're not the kind of things that catch voters' eyes necessarily. And you look at the person, his personal unpopularity, and you know you're, you may be dragging a big, heavy weight into the 2018 midterms um, with control of both House and Senate at stake. So it's obviously worrisome to the extent that this race looks like it was badly affected uh, from the Republican standpoint by Donald Trump. You'd be worried about that. I spoke to a member of Republican leadership recently who said if we don't get this tax bill through and signed, we can kiss our majority goodbye. Hard for me to know whether that was overstatement or not. Do you think that? Do you think that this tax plan is pivotal yeah, to Republicans keeping the majority? Well, here's, here's the way I would look at that, Tucker. Taxes are, are perhaps the signature Republican domestic issue. Right. If they fail on that, then what's the rationale for them? That's the signature issue. If you're a, if you're a Trump voter, and you think he's doing a good job and you think his agenda is the one and his party fails to pass it. That's what leads to the perception that Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell are the problem and ought to be got rid of. So that's a chunkier base that falls away from you if you're a Republican, right? And if you are a mainstream Republican and you see that under, under Trump's leadership, you couldn't get that signature issue in place, that signature promise kept, then you're disaffected as well. So that's a double whammy, really, if you, if you think about it, against the Republicans. They cannot, political, in political terms, they can't afford to fail on this. And of course, they're so fractious these days. Now you've got people coming out all over the place saying they can't yeah. support it. You know, Jim Lankford, who's a pretty steady customer of the Republican senator from Oklahoma, pretty conservative, uh, he's complaining about that it's going to add to the deficit and so on. Um, and of course, you've got the never-ending claims of Democrats that no matter how you structure it, they're going to say that it's a tax cut that favors the rich. Well, that, that, that can be a telling issue. Um, since the rich pay most of the taxes, it's pretty hard to cut them without helping the rich. But that's, uh, 
Uh, that's, that's a political reality Republicans have been dealing with for a long time. They need to deal with it this time, too. Brett Hume, thank you for that. You bet, Tucker. As you can see from our screen, reporting that the Democrat, Ralph Northam, has just won the Virginia governor's race. The Democrat has also won in the state of New Jersey. We're assuming that Bill de Blasio remains uh, mayor of New York. We'll have updates on all of that uh, throughout the hour.